I'm James Spann. This is the Weather Extreme video. This is for Thursday, the 19th, the morning edition. Cold this morning, big warm up today. Moist air comes back tomorrow. Let's get in there and take a look. A lot of questions. We'll see if we can dig up some answers. We'll start with some of the SkyCam shots around the Alpha SkyCam network early this morning at the somewhat ridiculous hour of 5 a.m. There's a live look at downtown Gadsden. It's clear and it's cold. Look at Jasper in Walker County. Let's go way down south. How about a look at downtown Atmore in Escambia County? All right, got the uh, water vapor satellite imagery. Got a northwest flow aloft. Powerful jet stream still slamming into the Pacific Northwest. Temperatures this morning are mostly in the 20s. Anywhere from 25 to 31 around this part of the state. But again, this will be our last freeze for a while. But ooh, look at those numbers up north. Ouch. Yesterday, some folks up uh, on the Canadian border uh, didn't get past 15 below zero even during the middle of the day. This is a brutally cold air mass, but uh, it stays north of us, thank goodness. We're just catching a little glancing blow here this morning. Look at that ex extreme cold warning up there again for uh, North Dakota, Minnesota, where the, even our friends up there are suffering, where they're not used to get, being this cold. Winter storm warnings continue for parts of the northwest and the convective outlook, this is day three. This is Saturday, and uh, this is the one we'll watch initially here. This is showing low-end 5% severe weather probabilities for Alabama and some of the adjacent states. And it's a marginal situation, but there could be a strong, maybe a severe storm on Saturday. And again, we'll look at the details here in a moment. And the QPF chart, rain for the next five days, valid through Monday evening of next week, suggesting about one inch. Okie doke, this is the uh, GFS, the 06Z run at noon today, and this is at 500 millibars, about 18,000 feet up. And again, uh, dry northwest flow aloft, and it should be a sunny day. Despite the uh, cold, we'll be up there somewhere between 57 and 60 this afternoon. The sky mostly sunny. But tomorrow, clouds are back, kind of a moist, muggy air mass, and we'll need to mention a chance of scattered showers during the day. And we rise into the mid to upper 60s kind of balmy Saturday as we start the weekend this run of the GFS is not overly bullish on the shortwave uh, it's it's dampened the thing out and accordingly it is not as wet still it's going to rain on Saturday but this model run is a tad drier suggesting rainfall amounts of less than one half inch but let's check the RPM uh, this is at midday Saturday and you can see the shortwave is a little more well defined in this output We'll check the, the surface. A lot of outdoor things are happening Saturday, so we'll just kind of walk you through the day. This is 6 o'clock Saturday morning off the RPM, showing showers around. We'll go to noon, and you can see, again, it's kind of like the GFS. It's not overly widespread. It's not going to rain all day. There'll be clearly breaks, but just be aware that there could be some uh, rain at any time. And uh, 6 o'clock Saturday, and you can see there's no really heavy convection showing up here. By 6 o'clock, it's got the better chance of rain down to the south of uh, Interstate 20. In terms of severe weather, this is the uh, Cape on Saturday uh, at midday. And, you know, it's kind of like the deal the other day, you know, weekly unstable. The, the instability values are generally 500 joules or maybe six, 700 or less. In the shear, not overwhelming. This is the 0 to 3 kilometer helicity. Here's the EHI, the Energy Helicity Index, uh, Saturday afternoon. And, you know, it's, it's above a 1, which is somewhat significant. But, again, it's just nothing to blow you away. So typical cold season system. Could be a few strong storms, maybe a severe storm, but not a big deal more than likely. Of course, it's a big deal if you get that one severe storm in your neighborhood. Okay, Sunday, uh, this run kind of keeps the weather moist and muggy and warm and maybe a little shower here and there, uh, and, and the numbers have come up again. Uh, this run has the high on Sunday at 72. Uh, it's kind of fluctuated greatly in here, uh, but again, it should be kind of mild and muggy. And then Sunday night, a cold front comes in here, and I uh, got a very deep surface low up there at Green Bay, 992 millibars. And, and, and even this, you'll have to watch for strong storms, but it'll be late at night. And uh, I don't think we'll have a severe weather problem. And then by uh, Monday at midday, the rain is gone uh, south and east of here. So we'll mention a good chance of uh, showers and storms uh, Sunday night into Monday, maybe Monday morning. And then Tuesday, we've got a dry air mass. No cold air will probably be in the 60s. If this is right, the GFS is showing 64. Wednesday, for now, looks quiet. 
And then a week from today, yeah, you talk about model madness. The GFS, every time you look at it, it's different. Uh, and as you know, we're not really using this model in the medium range this season. But now it's got this closed upper low over Mexico with the northern branch north of here and uh, just a little rain moving in. But, you know, nothing like that big, nasty, severe weather look it showed a few days ago. And the following day on uh, Friday the 27th, uh, very mild. Look at the lack of cold air. I mean, that's just warm for this time of the year. Now, let's go to the European. This is the one we prefer. Now, this is uh, Thursday morning at 6 o'clock. It's got a 1,008 uh, millibar surface low near Jackson. Um, and, of course, the better chance of any severe weather would be near and south of that low. So that would be kind of wet. And then by Thursday evening, the surface low deepens. It moves northeast of here. And the rain begins to move out. So, again, we're going to highlight Thursday as a good chance of showers and storms. There could be some strong storms. This might be a severe weather setup. We'll just have to wait and see. Again, it's seven days out, and there's no way to resolve details. We'll check the end of the forecast on the 3rd of February. And, oh, boy, that looks cold. Look at the ridge over the western part of the continent, the downstream trough, and uh, that's a 1,040 millibar high feeding that. You know, we've seen looks uh, up in the 1050 range. But whatever, if by chance that is right, it's cold. And again, we were watching the NAO trends. And for the first time in a long time, it wants to go negative on the ensembles uh, around the first of the month. So again, just we'll keep an eye on things out there for signs of that pattern change that we're kind of expecting before the season ends. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog. The next video by 3.30 or so today. And if you live around here, we invite you to watch us on television this evening. ABC 3340 in Birmingham at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and God bless. The first thing you've got to understand, you cannot rely on an outdoor siren. You cannot hear those inside a home, a building, a church. It won't work. You've got to get something inside your house. That's a weather radio or maybe a smartphone app. We work with a company that's developed a wonderful weather radio app for Android phones and iPhones. It knows where you are, and if you're in a tornado warning polygon, you get the warning. And if you're not, you don't. It's an effective device, and it's a great way to be sure you get the warning.